Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Sam and a very warm welcome back to my channel. You guys are here to learn a little bit more Arabic today and I hope that, I hope you guys have been enjoying the um, the verbs playlist. You know, I've been spending a little bit of time conjugating some verbs. Uh, we've been talking about going from the past tense to the present tense, dual, plural, singular, um, through the different genders. And, um, you know, we've arrived at what might be the last video in this little course. And, um, yeah, so let's crack on with it. You know, in the last lesson we did what we call jazm verbs or al-fi'l al-majzum. And that is used for the negative past as well as, uh, in a way it's used for imperatives and in a way it's used for kind of um, commands to yourself. Like if you're saying, let's do something, you say like, la nebda. And uh, nebda in that case is a, a fir al -majzum. So we covered that in the last lesson. So what we're doing in this lesson, you know, this is kind of, this is kind of the last type of uh, fir al mudari the last type of kind of present tense conjugation of verbs that we're going to be doing in this little series. So... You know, generally, we've, we've done a little map in this course so far of what, when you have a verb, you have past tense verbs, or, or the or the madi, you have the present tense verbs, which are called the mudari'. and you also have the imperative. You know, the imperative we'll do in a different video or something, perhaps, inshallah. But, um, so we've done the past, the imperative we'll do in another, another video, but this this bit, mudari' in the middle, uh, which which is often called just the normal present tense, is of three kinds, okay? It's of three kinds. You have those which are just normal, rafa' which are just normal present tense verbs that we've done in this course. We have jezm verbs, which we did in the previous lesson, which is for, as I said, you know, past negative, when you use lem before it, and then when you use, like, commands to yourself, when you say, let's do something. That's what you use the jezm for. So this is the last of those, okay? This is the last of the, the uses of sort of present tense conjugations of verbs. So what is it? You know, we're going to go through this structure, we're going to approach it in a what, why, and how structure, just like we did in the last video, because um, the feedback's been really good for that, it seems like it works for you guys, and um, I think it makes sense too. So what on earth is the nasab? What on earth is is al fi'l al mansub? Well, um, what it is, is, you know, it's another case. You know, it's a case. It's not a tense, necessarily. It's a case of verbs. So you use it for using verbs in a certain way. Um, in, in English, or in like a Western tradition, we translate it, um, as being, sometimes it's called the subjunctive. Um, you know, I, I've learned Spanish before, and I don't know if it exactly lines up with what the Western subjunctive is, but um, but it is, but it, it does in a lot of ways, right? So it's often called the subjunctive. Okay, we'll add this on here. Subjunctive. It's often referred to as the accusative. Um, accusative, maybe. Don't take that spelling. It might be accusative, maybe. I'm not sure. Or accusative. I'm not sure. Um, it's often referred to as the A case as well. You know, it'll be clear why. It'll be clear why it's referred to as the A case sometimes. And the way that we use it is very similar to the jesm. You know, it's very similar to the jesm that we used the last time. We'll get onto that in, when we're talking about how. So why do we use it, right? Why do we use it? What, 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 are, the, what are the reasons why we would say, oh, we're not going to use a normal present tense verb for this. We're going to use a nasab verb. But what would be those cases? So an example of when that would be is if you say len before something. Okay, this is like saying will not. Yeah, it's like saying will not. So if you're ever saying you will not do something, you use this, you use the nasab. If ever you're saying, if ever you're using a verb after the word hatta, meaning until, if you use it after hatta, hatta, um, which means until, as I said. Uh, or if you are using it after n, and there's some others, you know, li en, for example. Li en is another one. You know, and, and, and there are some others as well, but en basically means that. If you say something like, I love that I do something, or I love to do something, or I want to do something. Well, that's an example when you would use the, the subjunctive in Spanish. If you say, like, I want that I do something, or, um, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so en means that, li en means for that, or because. So those are some times when you would use it, right? Those are some those are some of the whys. Those are some of the whys that you might use it. Good. So this is the big one. How do we use it? How do we use it? Um, it's very similar to the jesm. Okay. In the in the jesm lesson, uh, I'm pretty sure we learnt about um, you know normal what we call strong verbs that are three consonants ke, te, be, or in the present tense yek, tubu. With the jesm, which was often called the zero case as well, because it has a sukun on the end. This is called the A case because that's a fatah on the end. So if we're saying, I will not write, you'd say, len yektube. Len yektube. Okay? Th that is what you do, essentially. 
with strong verbs that are singular, you put a fatal on the end. Okay, that's that's how we, that's how you do it, right? And that's the same with you know that's the same with you know if you're saying in the first person, if you're saying len ektuba, I will not write. Len ektuba kutuban, I will not write books. Yeah, len ektuba shayen or, or whatever, right? You know. That's how you do it, right? With normal singular. I think we did say with the jesm verbs, we talked about how jesm kind of means to squeeze something. And so you often squeeze the middle vowel in these hollow verbs, like yakulu would become like lam, lam yakul, for example. You, you sort of squeeze that, that, that in the middle with the jesm. You don't do that. You don't do that with, with the nasab. You don't need to do that. So if, I'll, I'll demonstrate with a hollow verb for you. If we'd say something like, um, if we're going to say something like, until, until I say, if we're going to say something like, don't do it until I say, for example. We'd say, Hatta, Hatta, Aqula. Hatta, Aqula. Yeah. Until I say, Hatta, Aqula. Some of you might have heard as well in the hadith um, of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's in the, it's in the 40 hadith of Imam al Nawawi, if any of you have read that, where um, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب. He says until you love. Okay, this is why there's يحب. You know, لا يؤمن أحدكم. None of you believe حتى يحب. Until you love. Um, and then it goes on to say until you love for your brother, what you love yourself. But that's why it's حتى يحب, not حتى يحب. Um, whereas normally it would be يحب, but because of حتى, you have to use a فعل منصوب. Good, okay, so the, the point of that really was just to let you know that with hollow verbs that have a wow in the middle or a yeah in the middle, you don't shorten it in the nasab like you did with the jesm. So that's easier, yeah, that's easier. That's just, you put a fatah on the end most of the time. And then it's still the case with the af'al al-khamsa, that the five verbs, when you do hadhf and noon, you cut the noon off on the end. So if we're going to say something like, um, you know, you will not write, you know, for example, len, Len tektub tektubina, yeah. It would normally be tektubina, right? But tektubina, you know, that, that confused me when I was learning this because tektubina already has a fatah on the end. So it's like sort of already looks like it's a case, right? But the way you distinguish that between the nasab and just the normal present tense, you don't say len tektubina, because it normally would be, te you'd say le tektubina as well, it normally would be that. Um, in its normal rafa, but the way you distinguish it is, it's just len tek to be, yeah? You do have the noon, you cut off the noon of those five verbs. Those five conjugations are in the previous video, we did talk about them. Um, yeah, but essentially it's just you feminine, you know, it's it's you feminine, the anti conjugation. It's the hum, uh, the huma, the entum and entoma, I believe. Um, just off the top of my head, it's those five conjugations that it is. We've been through all of, that, all, all of those in this course. We did a separate video on the singular, and then we did another video on the dual and the plural conjugations of them too. So, um, so we've covered those. We've covered the nasab. Let, let, let me just run through a few more examples for you, just to, just to demonstrate how we might use this as well. Um, you know, let's do, let's do maybe one with N, because this is so useful, right? Especially those of you, this come at a good time, actually. In the GCSE, this is really important um, for you expressing yourself and just making more sophisticated sentences, really, to be able to say... I love to do something, or I like doing something, or um, you know, or, or I have to do something, or I should do something. That these are really, really useful, right? So if you're going to say I want to eat, for example, you say uridu, I want n, and then whatever you want to do afterwards, but in the nasab. So if you're going to say something like um, I want to eat, uridu an air kula. Okay, remember the a because it's an a kula because it's a nasab verb. If you would say something like an uhibu an alaba. I love to play something. أحب أن ألعب كرة القدم. You know, I, I love to play football. Um, yeah, or if you want to say, I should. You know, ينبغي أن ينبغي أن أتعلم. I, I should learn. ينبغي أن أتعلم اللغة العربية. You know, I, I should learn Arabic. If you'd say, um, I have to. Yeah, من الواجب أن something. من الواجب أن من الواجب أن um, من الواجب أن أذهب إلى المسجد يوم الجمعة. You know, I I have to go to the masjid Yom al Jum'ah. I have to I have to go to the masjid on on Friday. Yeah, um, yeah. So yan bari an is like you, you sh someone should do something. Min al wajib an something they have to do it. Um, now that those are really useful. Those just broaden your range of language a lot. And if you use them in the in the oral exam, it's much it's much you know it, it gives you a good opportunity to just broaden your your answers. 
um, I know on the mark scheme it's um, you know the, 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 the top the top kind of bracket of, of answers for your oral exam um, if any of you haven't still haven't done your GCSE oral exam is been able to offer your opinions and then justify them so this is really good for justifying your opinions and just broadening the sort of things that you say really nice good I really hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the entire course. If you've just stumbled across this video, go back to the beginning of this playlist and watch it all the way through because I've used some language that, you know, I haven't really explained in this lesson, but I do I do explain it in previous lessons. So it's quite linear, you know, the, the way for you to really get the most out of this video. But um, regardless, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you benefited from it. And if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up in the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And, um, you know, link up with me. Comment, put a comment below. Email me if you want, inshallah. Visit my website. I'll link everything up in the description um, for this video. And um, I look forward to hearing from you guys. And I'll uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.